for the Fighting Irish from the University of Notre Dame. At one forward, a 6'6 junior from Philadelphia, Pennsylvania, number 24, Mark Stevenson. And at the other forward, a 6'9 sophomore from Plantation, Florida, number 43, Scott Pata. Center, a 6'9 senior from the Queens, New York, number 54, Gary Bose. At one guard, a six foot senior from Jersey City, New Jersey, number four, David Rivers. from the University of Louisville. At one forward, a 6'7 senior from Louisville, Kentucky. Number 41, Herbert Brook. At the other forward, a 6'7 junior from Savannah, Georgia. Number 42, Hermes Ellison. The center, a seven-foot sophomore from Louisville, Kentucky, number 50, Dalton Spencer. At one guard, a six-four sophomore from Louisville, Kentucky, number three, Keith Williams. And at the other guard, a six-three freshman from Bay City, Texas, number 23, LaBratford Smith. Head coach of the Cardinals, now in his 17th season at Louisville, Denny Crum. On the other hand, Denny Crum with his first game of the season. Notre Dame has played once. They lost earlier this week to the University of Indiana. And you wonder, Joe B. Hall, as you come into this game, just how LeBradford Smith is going to respond. They're certainly expecting an awful lot from him, Gary. And uh, that's a tremendous pressure to put on a freshman this early in the year in a game as important as this one with so much exposure, so many people here in this arena today. Uh, we're going to, that's going to be interesting to see how he reacts. Digger Phelps, on the other hand, will depend on his veteran David Rivers. Tempo is so important in this game. Well, David handling responsibilities away from this man David Rivers Keith uh, Williams defensing David Rivers in a man-to-man -man. and Notre Dame starts with a stack just to get the ball into Rivers hands here's the guy that creates so well 20 seconds now on the shot clock tries to get it in and does the paddock add it away it's off of Spencer of Louisville the Irish will reset it with 16 seconds on the shot clock Digger wants more scoring from the inside, so you can look for that. You can look for isolation in the low post, and trying to get that ball inside, especially the Bulls. Bose kicks it back out to Rivers. That's Williams picking him up. He's a sophomore out of Louisville. Here is Mark Stevenson. Back to Rivers. Head and shoulder fake. That spinning move with five seconds on the shot clock. And it comes out and recovered by Stevenson. They'll have a fresh 45. Weak side help on Rivers then from the weak side guard. They're looking for opportunities to double team on him. Baseline post wide open. And the Irish jump on top two to nothing. Took a lot of time, but they got what they wanted to accomplish. I think Digger's going to like that. He's going to like that inside scoring. Take some of that scoring pressure off the river. Williams kicks it off to Purvis Ellison. He wastes no time and tied it up. Ellison, Ellison is a fine shooter from that baseline. So Jackson will bring it up. Both these teams would like to pressure, pick them up, control the tempo of the game. Now Bradford Smith, he is picking up Jackson. Bose, cross court now to Rivers. There's the first screen we've seen for Rivers. 
And that sag weak side help creates an opportunity on the other side. And Stevenson is able to follow inside. As you might recall, they were a very good rebounding team a year ago. But they're concerned about that this time around. Well, they out-rebounded Indiana, but that's going to be a big key in this game. You saw LeBrad for Smith a little tentative that time when he was handling the ball in the backcourt. Almost dragged his pivot foot. Here he is. He is out of Bay City, Texas. Considered one of the top five prospects coming out of high school. Two-time the Texas High School Player of the Year. Just underway. 4-2 Notre Dame. Here is Smith. Gets it inside to Ellison. Nice drop step on both. And a foul going inside. Foul is going to go on Spencer. Felton Spencer, 7'1", sophomore. He is foul prone. Felton Spencer has had a problem with fouls inside, especially defensive and going for the offensive board. He has worked hard in the offseason on his conditioning. He looks good. There he is. He does. down and... Uh, Really looks solid. He looks thinner even though he weighs 10 pounds more. His body fat much better. Here is David Rivers trying to penetrate. Brings it out to Stevenson. 17-22 to go in this first half. Nice fake by Stevenson. He's got it. He got Crook off balance and put it up and in. Louisville switches everything, every cross out front. And that time, you saw Felton Spencer on Rivers. Here is Smith committing what you might call a freshman mistake. Well, Rivers has got great quickness, and he just got in front, picked up that charging foul, and that's a senior versing a freshman. Take a look. And there he was. He was in good position. Referees made a fine call as Rivers, with his quickness, just got in front of LeVadford Smith. You can expect that to happen. Rivers using that experience against the freshman, playing his first game ever in major college basketball. Boy, what, what they're asking of this freshman is just unbelievable. Rivers ducks inside, and he gets it. He can find those gaps, Joe, as well as anybody. He absorbs some body contact right there, too, but he still got that ball in in good shape. The Irish now with an 8-2 lead. Herbis Ellison, a little indecisive, but he got it to go off the glass. And Louisville now has four points, all of them from Purvis Ellison. Tempo right now, I would say, is in favor of the Irish, would you? I would say that uh, Louisville wants a running game, don't you? Jameer Jackson ducked inside. Jackson last year only averaged a little over two points a game, scores his first two, and it's 10-4, Notre Dame. Denny Crump said he wanted the game to be as fast as it could be. Smith on his own miss, gives to Crook, blocked that time, in through Allison. Purvis Allison has scored all six to the Cardinals' points. He's they trail by four. He's really alert on that offensive board. He and Crook go to the board really well. Well, he's rededicated himself. He says he wants to get back to that year when he led them to the national championship as a freshman. Scoring the first six for Louisville, down by four. Rivers off to Vos. Vos, the senior at six foot nine, follows his own shot. Got it. There's a guy that Digger Phelps hopes can score about 15 points and get 10 rebounds a game. He did it against North Carolina last year. I'm impressed so far with Notre Dame's inside game. It's much better than it was in Indiana. Herbert Crook and the Metro Conference Player of the Year last season has his first two points. This Louisville team definitely has the athletes. It's a case of whether they can get the perimeter shooting and get somebody to play that point guard. They're missing Tony Kimbrough, who will be out the first three games due to some academic difficulties. Rivers kicks it out to Jackson. Smith runs into the pick set by Vos, and we have a switch now, a mismatch. Inside it goes to Scott Paddock. He kicks it out to David. Three-pointer. Well, there they get caught in that switch. As Felton Spencer tried to go back and locate his man inside and left Rivers over just for a second. Baseline, Ellison again. I would say he's got uh, an idea to return to an All-American form the way he's playing right now. He's really looking good here early in this game, and he is that type player. 15-10. He's at home on that baseline. Jackson tried to look inside of Paddock. There's Paddock out of Plantation, Florida. That was a strong move by Paddock. They primarily want defense and rebounding out of him, but he scores too. They're going to Felton Spencer's man. I'm sure they're hoping to draw some fouls on him. Foul is 
going to go against Spencer again. He was over the back of Gary Vos. We have a substitution now for the Cardinals. Coming in is number 21, Kenny Payne, six foot eight junior out of Laurel, Mississippi. 14 minutes to go in this first half, and Notre Dame leads it by seven. Come see Bill Cosby in the hilarious new movie, Leonard Part Six. And Pepper, that's what Digger felt wants from him inside. And he's certainly doing that job. But he doesn't want this. And here Gary Vos goes, leaves Ellison to go up and help. And Ellison gets loose in that favorite spot of his along the baseline for the easy pass. Ellison has eight of Louisville's ten. On the other hand, Notre Dame, all five starters have scored. Ellison with the eight points. Six foot nine. He actually six foot nine at bare feet. Six ten when he wears his shoes. Plays like a seven footer because of those long arms. I don't know why coaches have a controversy over that, Gary. They're always saying how tall he is barefooted, how tall he is in shoes. What if those shoes have about two inches thick soles? As we mentioned, Kenny Payne was going to check in. Also joining him out there is Mike Abram, number 34 for Louisville, as Danny Crum makes his first substitutions of the game. Seven point lead for the Irish. Oh, look at this by Rivers. Most wasn't quite ready for it. You've really got to be alert, don't you, Joe, when number four is penetrating? Well, I would think the Notre Dame players would be alert for that. He does it so much, and that was an excellent move that he made right then. This is Kenny Payne out of Laurel, Mississippi. LeBradford Smith running him in the board. Here is Mike Abram. He's a senior out of Muncie, Indiana. Notre Dame's trying to change the pace here with the zone. Herbert Crook, tough inside, doesn't get that one. Out it comes to David Rivers. Now here's where Rivers is so tough in the open floor. Seemingly always seeing the open man. He fakes LeBradford Smith up and Smith. Well, they're going to call traveling. I don't know what the call was. Traveling or a foul. One of the others turned over to Louisville. Oh, it's going to be the foul. That's a... It was a fine fake by David Rivers. Here is Kenny Payne and Payne who can shoot very well. They need his outside shooting. He has almost picture-perfect form when he releases the basketball. You know, he only shot 35% from the field last year, but everyone says that this guy can really stroke it. He is an excellent shooter, has tremendous form. He was a Mississippi High School Player of the Year, his senior year. Out it comes to Vos. Stevenson, the 6'6 junior out of the New York area, Philadelphia area, I should say. Baseline picked up by Abrams. Abrams brings it out to Smith. LeBradford Smith on the move. He'll take it in. Followed by Ellison. No, they wave it off. No basket. A foul against Notre Dame. What an impressive follow by Purvis Ellison. It was a good drive also by LeBradford Smith as he took the ball to the basket with courage and drew the foul. But Ellison was there, and he is a fine offensive rebounder that has an instinct for that ball. David Rivers is going to be credited with a foul. Two shots coming for LeBradford Smith. Last year in high school, he averaged 26.5 a game. He was a first-team All-American in the USA today. We mentioned twice named the Texas Player of the Year. That, he gets his first point right there. Maybe that'll break the ice for him a little I bit. I think he'll feel better after that. 17-12, Notre Dame. 12-22 left to go in the first half. The Big Four Classic. 17-13 our count. Baseline, it comes now to Stevenson. Abram playing the tough defense on Stevenson. Kicks it in the corner to Jackson. And he spins, and he palmed the ball. He turns it over. The one-on-one -on -one move. He was time to take the freshman and drive the baseline. And he just turned that ball over as he palmed it as he tried to pivot. But Bradford Smith picked up by Jackson just inside 12 minutes gone by in this first half. Inside it goes to Ellison. Foles tries to post up on him. And instead, Ellison, good touch. He has 10 points. And he is playing up a storm right now. He's brought Louisville within two. What a game he's having. 10 of the 15 by the Cardinals. Baseline, Fos, tough shot. Off balance, rebound, Kenny Payne. That was an ill-advised effort. Good defense by Crook. And Smith tries to get it to Crook. Crook can't hang on. Rivers was in his way. It'll go to Notre Dame. With 11.26 to go in this first half. The Irish have had their lead cut to two. We have a timeout. We'll be right back.
you can have extra cash for whatever reason you need it. The Discover Card. Discover Card cash. Not much better than he did last year. I think he senses he's going to have a great game. Look at this strong move to the basket. Paddock should have given help on the baseline there. He should have dropped in and helped out on that drive. I'm sure that Digger will talk to him about that. But they, Notre Dame has got to give help on Ellis and inside. Top of the broadcast, we talked about 1973, their last meeting. That was in the NIT. And John Shoemate led the way, 19 points. Now the assistant coach, you see him directly behind Digger Phelps. Formerly coached at Grand Canyon College in Phoenix, and he's done a very good job with the Notre Dame big men. I remember him well as a player. He made us make some changes in our 1-3-1 zone as he hit from that baseline. Louisville now has scored five straight points to cut it to two. Notre Dame with the basketball, 11 minutes to go in this first half. Rivers with Abram on him. A lot of help by the Louisville players whenever Rivers has that ball, as you see. Bose got around Allison. Allison committed. Bose took care of it from there. And it's 19-15, six points for Bose. Kenny Payne stepped out to help, and it opened it up inside a good passing lane to Bose. Here's Abram. Abram worked very hard in the offseason trying to prove his outside shooting. But Bradford Smith, three-pointer doesn't go. And the rebound by Scott Paddock. Paddock takes up a lot of room inside. The Long. shot. Smith shot looked good. There is Rivers missing. Excellent effort that time by Stevenson. It'll be off of Louisville. Let's go back to the last basket by Gary Bose. Substitution. Well, here was the passing lane opened up, and he ripped it through. He took that ball in both hands and ripped it right between two defensive men and took it strong to the basket. Substitution now for Notre Dame. That's Keith Robinson, the 6'9 sophomore out of Buffalo, New York. He was a Proposition 48 casually, but they have high hopes for him. He averaged 30 points a game in high school, and they think he could be a starter before this year is over. He's considered one of the top three or four rebounders in high school his senior year. There he is with the ball. Last name, the same number as another Robinson a year ago that played for Navy. And he was a good one. There is Stevenson, and Abram goes high. He can't control it. He's fouled by Robinson. You can see Abram playing a lot tougher, and that is what he did in the offseason, hit the weights, improve his conditioning, and they think his toughness will really help this ball club. The rap on Abram was that he was a practice player, but uh, the way he got up in the air right then, he was thinking about this game right here. Bradford Smith now with a double team on him in the backboard. Gets it off to Ellison. Herbert Crook, that's his spot. He loves to shoot inside. Oh. Ellison tries to follow. Abram does, but they're going to wave it off. Going to be a foul on Mike Abram. But again, you got to like the tenacity of number 34. And Ellison keeping that ball alive with a beautiful tip. But Abram went after it, but uh, you just can't put that hand up on that shoulder. And here's a full court press by Louisville. Is they're going to deny this throw in substitution for the Cardinals substitution now Keith Williams number three will come in Crook started exit instead it's going to be Smith the freshman he'll get a breather so his first baptism did a very creditable job Ellison back in a safety position he watches for the run out it's David Rivers inside and he gets hammered no question about it he split the two men That's who it was Burvis Ellison committing the foul. So creative is David Rivers. In fact, he's more creative with the ball than without it. That's the problem they've had this year. they got to get the ball in his hands. Well, the thing that that creates is standing on the part of the other players. When he's dribbling, they don't know what to do. But what they have to do is learn to open up the passing lane and be ready when he draws the defense. And his creativity is very important to this Notre Dame team and their success. Six points now for David Rivers, one of one from the stripe. 2015 Notre Dame. Bose pushed off on that one. They caught him. Bose committing the foul. Digger Phelps just four victories away from becoming the winningest coach in Notre Dame history. Coming in here with 324. Well, that was an unusual miss for Rivers. He's an 84% free throw shooter. 2015, the Irish, Keith Williams, has just checked back in to Abram. 
Mike Abram, that's got to be encouraging to Denny Crum to see him playing as well as he's playing in the early going. They handled the ball very well, spot the open man, and they whipped the press the way you should. They took it right to the basket and scored. That'll discourage the Notre Dame press. Irish by three. Here's Keith Robinson. Robinson kicks it out. Nobody there. I guess it was touched by Louisville, so Notre Dame will reset it on the far side. A little indecision on the part of the officials there. And on our part, too, Gary, because I couldn't tell exactly what happened out there. Jamara Jackson will inbounds it at the 9-10 mark of the first half. It's interesting, this defense by Louisville and how they're handling the screens set to Free Rivers. And you can see the loose switch right there, and then Abram comes back to take him. A lot of help, but there's the loose man. That's going to be a traveling call on Bose. He shuffled his feet trying to get up to stuff it. But again, what creativity by David Rivers. What a perfect example of what he does off of the dribble. They're just creating situations with those picks and then let him go and look at this. That wasn't his fault they didn't execute that pattern right there. The turnover gets it back to Crook and Louisville. Crook not able to get it. Payne goes up. He brings it down. Out to Keith Williams. Williams came on strong late last year for Louisville. And he's taking charge out here. He's directing traffic. That maturity is beginning to help him. Bose tipped it outside to Payne. He misses badly, and a foul is going to go on Bose. Payne just hurried his shot right then. He had plenty of time, but he shot it a little quick. And uh, he certainly has the good form, but he just rushed that shot. His second personal. Bose just got lost right here. He got caught on the outside. Ellison had that board position. All he could do was shove his way in. Scott Paddock has checked back in as you have a bird's eye view of this crowd of about 40,000 plus. Second largest crowd in regular season and the largest crowd of course was in 68 when UCLA met Houston in the Astrodome. Here is Crook. He retrieves it. Crook always seems to be in the right place at the right time. Notre Dame was back in the man that time, and they got good help on Ellison inside. They knocked that ball away. Out to Kenny Payne. Inside Ellison. He's fouled. The basket is going to count. Oh, a good three-point play by Ellison. He took it up strong. He knew he was going to get fouled. He shifted that ball over to the left hand, took the foul, and still personal skipped foul. it off the glass. A great for play. For he's got cut off his second personal. The team is fair. Yes. Substitution both ways. Look at this pass. Perfect lead. Ellison goes up, took the foul, shifted to his left hand, protected it with the basket, and laid it off the glass. 12 points. This is his first time at the line. Curtis Ellison with 12 of Louisville's 19. Rebound is cleared that time by Stevenson. So in the game now, you're looking at number 10. That is Tim Singleton, a freshman out of New Orleans. They would like to have him play some of that point guard, take some of the pressure away from this man, David Rivers. Rivers inside, he got it. Number four is scoring, David Rivers. When Rivers gets it, he's going to put it on the floor and either work for that shot or create a mismatch or free a player as Louisville tries to give help on him. They signed Ellison's long arms. What a target he is inside. Keith Williams, the left-hander, he needs to hit that shot. It was not going for him a year ago. What a help it could be if he could give him that perimeter shooting. Here is Rivers, and nobody picked him up that time. Finger roll as he took it down the middle. Rivers is on the move, and he loves this transition game. He wants to get it and push it up the floor. It's interesting, both of these teams like the transition game. And he paid. He just can't get one to go for him. Tipped out that time by Keith Robinson, and Payne saves it. Williams went to the floor as it's getting rough inside. Is it ever? Ellison has a strip by Singleton. Singleton and Robinson come out of there with it. Singleton flew from the weak side to come in on Ellison's blind side to get that ball. Baseline Rivers. He had somebody up in his face, but he still got the roll. He can hurt you in so many different ways. Complete player makes it 26-19 Notre Dame. Rivers just keeps rolling. And here's Will Bradford Smith. Well, Bradford has been kind of quiet here. Maybe he's taking some lessons from David Rivers. What a player he was in high school. He also high jumped six foot ten and had a 92 mile per hour fastball. What an athlete. Stevenson misses. Abram staying alive with Robinson. It's going to be off of Louisville. Substitutions coming into the ball game. Fulton Spencer will come in. Also coming in will be Craig Holly. We have a timeout. Notre Dame high five.
If you thought you had to give up comfort to get a close shave, Norelco says, think again. Their revolutionary shaving system shaves skin close in a way that's incredibly comfortable. As the hair enters the chamber, the patented lift and cut system lifts each hair and holds it a split second before a blade cuts it. So it's possible to shave skin close without the blades even touching the skin. Norelco Rotitract, where close and comfortable come face to face. I never realized the world was so full of hazards. That's why there's a company like MetLife. Because sometimes, things do get out of control. This game is what he wants. You take your here, eye off here's him. Here's Ellison inside. And, and look at that defensive effort by Singleton. He came in on the baseline and stripped that one clean. And look for the outlet pass to Rivers. That's what Notre Dame wants. They want the ball in Rivers' hands for that transition offense because they know what he can do with it once he gets it. He has scored the last three baskets now for Notre Dame. Well, he's tremendous. And, and you know, Gary, this game will take form as, as we see what Louisville tries to do to stop that of Rivers. As they make defensive adjustments, then what Notre Dame does to take advantage of those adjustments. Which you think is a very well played game for this early in the year? It's been excellent and I've been impressed with the inside game of both teams. Louisville we know had a, big, a good strong inside game but Notre Dame is demonstrating that also. Irish by five 615 to go in the first half out it comes to Mark Stevenson out of Roman Catholic High School same high school that produced Dallas Comagees who played at DePaul and of course now in the NBA. And Louisville has gone to a zone. They take it right inside to Paddock. Rivers, you know, has recognized that, yells it out now to tell his teammates what they're facing. Notre Dame will shift defensive a lot, and now Louisville doing that. A little trouble adjusting right now. 18 seconds on the shot clock. A straight 2 3 zone by Louisville right now. Boy, recognition so difficult sometimes. Out it comes to Stevenson. That zone is shifting pretty strong to Rivers, and they're going all the way back across to the weak side. The freshman Singleton, his first two points. Well, that's what they're going to need is another shooter from the outside other than Rivers if that Louisville defense concentrates on him. So the Irish back up to a seven-point lead. Inside, intended for Polk Spencer. Keith Williams, air ball, and Robinson rips it down. You can see why Digger Phelps is so impressed with the Buffalo sophomore. And Rivers hits again. David he's Rivers in. right now is kind of taking this game over. Hey, he's in his rhythm. Louisville had better do something to take him out of this. He has 14 points, 30-21 Notre Dame. The seven-foot-one sophomore Spencer doesn't get it. Robinson again with another defensive board. And here's Rivers again. He's always open on that transition. I, I wonder if maybe Louisville will send a player and keep that ball out of his hands. Well, they better do something in a hurry, Joe. That's a three-pointer. He's just, he's red hot. I see Denny Crum off his feet, and he's talking to the Louisville players as Purvis Ellison is ready to come back in. It was a five-point lead. All of a sudden, it's 33-21 Notre Dame. Well, Bradford Smith, you see his athleticism, ducks in. He's fouled by Singleton. John Connor will now check in for Notre Dame. Crook and Ellison, number 42, will check back in for Louisville. So Holly will leave along with Kenny Payne. Connor will come in for Notre Dame. He's an excellent outside shooter. The story right now is Rivers and the way he's just running free out here can do his thing. And that, as long as he does that, he's going to be effective. Ellison kicks it out to Williams. Keith Williams gets one to go. So that was a long dry spell. 33 now for Notre Dame. Louisville able to register the two points to 23. A 10 point difference. 4 7 to go in the first half. Back in a man to man by Louisville. Here is Robinson. Robinson has said he was very lonely last year, ineligible because of the Proposition 48, did not qualify academically. Here is Connor. He's an excellent shooter. Sean Connor out of Ziegler, Illinois. They think this young man needs a ball in his hands. Here's Singleton coming down, and Notre Dame is on a roll right now. They are playing effectively at both ends of the floor. Uh, they're doing it with their defense as well as their offense, as they're really playing alert. Oh, that's a nasty collision. Crook 
and Robinson collide. Robinson coming up trying to make the interception, commits the foul. They were checking to see if everything's okay. That was pass interference. <laughs> but he was playing the ball as he made that contact. Well, the thing about Crook, he had surgery last March for a bone cyst on his leg and a very complicated surgery. Rehabilitated it all summer long, but did not a was not able really to work out all summer because of the leg injury. You know, as, as, as important as is in the summer to keep your game alive today, and he missed the whole summer workout. Boy, is hit tough underneath, and that's going to be a foul on Robinson as he and Ellison are really banging on that missed free throw. Well, you like to see that. You like to see the players really aggressive inside. And, and, uh, there's going to be some contact, but you got to keep it to a minimum. That is the first guy to get into foul difficulty as Keith Robinson already has three. 333 to go in the first half. He's come in and given them some toughness and been effective on the defensive boards as Ellison misses. So they've missed two front ends of one and one. 37 23 the Irish. Singleton looks to me like he could take a lot of pressure off of Rivers handling the ball, playing with a lot of confidence. Out of Carver High School in New Orleans. There he is with the ball. Connor, you can't let him shoot that one. He'll hit that one all afternoon long. And there again, they, they drew the defense to one side of the floor and quickly rotated it away from Rivers, all the way around the floor to Connor. And he's an excellent shooter, and that's two, two good ones for him in a row. Surge in light precision. Notre Dame really giving Louisville fits. You got to play the sag in here and help, but you can't. Season number one. Let's go to Digger Phelps. Make sure we're doing what we're doing out of penetration. Get open shot. Do a great job getting the shots. Stay on the board. Don't get a fourth kick. Follow me. Digger doesn't want that fourth foul here in the first half by Robinson. Let's go back to Rivers and show how he can find the open man. Well, he draws three defensive men right here as he comes off of the screen. Then he rotates the ball away, and those weak side defensive people are sagging to help on the helpers men, to help on those people that are floating in under the basket that Rivers kicks off to. And they rotated that ball around the perimeter as Rivers has that ability to spot the man that is open when defense gives help. This game got away from Louisville after they had cut it to one, 20 to 19. The Notre Dame has outscored him 19 to four cents. And Crook now has tried to do something about it. Adds two, and it's 39-25. Crook, their most consistent player, their best inside man in shooting the basketball. He has four points in the game. Louisville presses, but when that ball gets in Rivers' hands, they back up. And here's two men out there looking for Rivers every time he gets the ball. You can see they now respect Connor. They jumped out on him that time. Well, that timeout took care of that. 39-25, the Irish. Here's Rivers ducking inside, and he draws a foul. Ellison tried to cut him off at the baseline, and Rivers went by him, and number 42 picks up the foul. He's just too quick on that baseline, and it's such a temptation to stick that knee out and not move that foot. When one of those quick guys tries to go by you. You can see why when David Rivers came to South Bend, Digger Phelps just turned the reins over to him as a freshman. What maturity he has and what creativity. And here's part of it right here. He now has 19 points. Notre Dame with a 41 to 25 lead. Well, Bradford Smith showing why they're excited about him, but that's not going to count. That's going to be charging on Smith. Well, he just didn't read the floor. The defense was there. If he would have pulled up and shot the jumper, once he got inside the line, he would have been all right. But you can see right here, he just continues on. No question about the defense being there. And Connor just takes the charge full in his chest. And that's inexperience. He'll learn. He's showing that he has the skills. All he has to do is find himself within the offense, be able to make the right decisions when he has that ball. And he will do that. He's a great player. That's his second foul. A lot of pressure on that freshman trying to take over the leadership. He's done very well. The players have responded to him, even though he is just a freshman. Rivers, by the way, is 8 of 10 from the field for 19 points. There's the interception by Williams. Abram back to Williams, and Rivers is there, but he commits a foul. A good play by Keith Williams. 
as he uh, anticipated that pass and got in the passing lane for the interception. He's playing with a lot more confidence this year. He is out of Seneca High School in Louisville. Rivers, by the way, is his first foul. Earlier we said he had fouled inside. They gave that foul to Scott Paddock. So David now with one personal foul. Williams at the line. He had a real scare. He had an automobile accident last month. His car flipped over three times. He was with his girlfriend. He suffered a concussion, a lot of bruises, so he's had to come back, and he said he was scared to death. Uh, he's, a, he's a tough young man. Get your attention, wouldn't it? Yes, it would. And here's Rivers with that ball again. 42-27, the Irish. Notre Dame has played so effectively. They lost on Tuesday night to Indiana and Bloomington and playing extremely effective in this early going. That may be the secret. Leave, leave Rivers open and he'll miss that. <laughs> Crook comes he down can, with it. He can certainly shoot with a hand in his face, but he missed that wide open shot. Kenny Payne, nice pass to Ellison. There is where Ellison's so good, Joe. He never brings the ball down. He keeps it up and takes it right to the hole. Well, he's got that experience, and he's been in these kind of battles many times. Rivers going a little dipsy doodle here as he takes it through his legs. So Singleton now trying to set it up, balance up the offense, off to Stevenson. Here's Connor. Now Crook's way out on him. After he hit those two, he's gotten some attention from this Louisville defense. Notre Dame's, half, Notre Dame's half court offense has been excellent. Connor misses Paddock, tried to keep it alive, and he did until Sean Connor could get it. Rivers looks up at the fresh shot clock, and they're going to back it out. 45 seconds left in the game. About five seconds more on the game clock than on the shot clock. Denny Crum up. You hate to be 12 down and give up an offensive rebound. Not get that chance to get it and go down and score and cut that to that lead. We come to the intermission break, the halfway point. Notre Dame showing a lot of poise, and why wouldn't you when you have David Rivers out there? They're spreading the floor right here. There's going to be an opportunity for someone to drive to the basket. Louisville would love to somehow get this thing together in the second half, but right now Notre Dame is playing exactly at the tempo they want, and they're just right now dictating to Louisville what they want to do. Their, their half-court game offensively has just been excellent, Gary. They're spreading uh, Louisville out right now and creating things for Rivers, and he is making the good decisions. He's red hot the shooting hand, and that's there's Louisville is going to have to make a big defensive adjustment this second half and try to keep that ball out of his hands. You have to follow Rivers out of the locker room right all the way to the floor. Learned a lot about his team against Indiana. Indiana will will point up your weaknesses. And I think that uh, very definitely Digger Coach Phelps has made some excellent adjustments going into this game. That's the kind of mistake that Louisville can ill afford to have as Abram can't hang on. And with 11 seconds in the first half, Notre Dame will inbound. Pressure coming from the Cardinals. Impressive first half by Digger Phelps' crew. There's Singleton has a batted out. It'll still be Notre Dame's ball. Now eight seconds left in the first half. Just barely enough time to get this ball up court for a score. Let's see if Notre Dame can execute. Connor and intercepted by Ellison. That's what he's so good at. Abram intercepted again. Three seconds, two, one second. He got it good off in goes. time, but it didn't go. Abram had the shot right there, Gary, and should have taken it. And so the Fighting Irish, an impressive first half of play. They laid it at the intermission break. 43-29 here in the Hoosier Dome. And against Indiana, Gary, they were only four points down with five minutes to go. So that tells you something about this Notre Dame team. They're shooting the ball well today, and they're on their game. Speaking of on their game, David Rivers, let's look at number four. He had 21 points in the first half, eight of 11 from the field. Well, he's done everything. He's taken the ball offensively, shot it right in their face. He's fed it off. He's drawn the defense and kicked it to the open man and created offensively, just like Digger Phelps wants him to do. And he's he's really putting a lot of demands on this player. And here he is coming through today in a big game before a big crowd. On the other hand, Purvis Ellison had a strong first half. He had 14 points for Louisville. I'm sure Denny Crum is very pleased with his play, even though he may not be pleased with the total effort of his team. 
but uh, Purvis Ellis is b definitely back to his form of that gathered, gathered all of the honors that he gathered as a freshman. All right, we're going to be back with the second half of this first of two games. Five hours of basketball continuing with Notre Dame on top at the halfway point. More effectively from the field. Well, the 63 percent is an excellent shooting percent, especially in in a game with this much hype and this much pressure. Greg. And that that has just been tremendous. And, and uh, David Rivers is responsible for an awful lot of that as he's hit eight for 11 from the field and three for four free throws in this first half. 15 to 15 on the boards. And that has to be pleasing to Digger. And not only to Digger, but the Leprechaun. Now, if you are Louisville, what kind of adjustments do you try to make? Well, first of all, I I'm interested to see what Denny does to keep the ball out of Rivers' hands. He's just dominating the game with that when he has that ball in his hands. I don't think that that uh, or I think maybe we expected too much from Bradford Smith. He has not been that much a factor in the game, but Ellison has, and that's a good sign for Louisville. But Crook has hit himself in this first half, and I look for him to come out and be more animated in the second half. He certainly has the ability, and only two for six for the field and four total points for him and, and two rebounds is not his normal game. But Bradford Smith, on the other hand, had three points. He was one of three from the field in that first half. So he will start with Williams at the guards. We have Crook and Payne is starting the second half. So they do not open the second half with Spencer, the seven foot one center. They have Payne in there and they move Purvis Ellison to the pivot. So that's an adjustment by Denny Crum as we start the second half. Well, he's probably looking for a quicker team because he needs to come back now and he wants more defensive pressure and uh, to force this tempo and get the Louisville team running. Attic with the rebound. It was a 19 to four run by Notre Dame after they had the lead cut to one that really gave them this advantage they have now. We just began the second half. Keith Williams is defense and Rivers almost in a one on one situation. They're not uh, giving that deep weak side sag. That's Williams trying to stay with him. Rivers backing out 15 seconds on the shot clock. Here is Vos. When that ball goes inside, Williams doesn't move to Look hell. at this. Almost pulled it off. Rebound, Bose rejected by Ellison. He Great had play 82 blocks last year. Bradford Smith has trouble with it. And we have a foul called on Keith Williams. But Bradford Smith, again, showing a little of his anxiety. And you got to believe he has been extremely tested here in his first game in major college competition. He almost gets this one down as he reverses. He fakes the reverse layup and comes back on the strong side with it. A great move. But what a block by Ellison. And he had 82 of those last year. 92 his freshman year. And the way he's gone, he'll be back at that standard very quickly. 43-29. Notre Dame. Stevenson wants help. Gets it out to Jameer Jackson. Williams reached in. Got the ball batted away. Crook comes up with it. And here's Rivers again. Close. Rivers. Rivers picked off the pass by Crook. He really got up in the air to make that interception. What He's all over he the floor. What doesn't he do, Joe? He's doing everything. Here is Crook missing. He may have swept the floor at halftime. I wasn't watching. Louisville just right now a little disconcerted. They're not into their offense. They came down, took another quick shot. And they're down now 45-29. And... They've got to make their move pretty quick. This game is all in the control of Notre Dame. They were a little lazy with that pass right there. They Here. better stay sharp because this Louisville is explosive. Look at this. Look out. That is going to be a charge on LeBradford Smith, again showing some of his inexperience, but at the same time, what an athlete. Well, he took it to the basket, but you could see all the way that he was going to charge. You could see that from over here that it was clearly not there for him to take that ball to the basket. And he he's a, being a little impulsive and we call it putting a bit in the teeth. He, he's kind of going with it. That's one of those terms from Kentucky. That's a horse term. That's right. Here's a trap half court. 
Well, they got to get something going. They've got to generate some turnovers. Here is Bose for the baseline. Crook is there with the rebound. I think Louisville would like that. They'd like someone else putting their ball up in the There's outside. Williams, and he was a little tentative with that. He'll follow, though, and get it. Good effort by Williams as he stayed with it. Danny Crown looking for something, trying to get this team back together. There was a disappointing campaign last year. Well, look. Louisville's team is not, they're not quitters. They're going to stay, hang in here. Here's Mark Stevenson, and he's able to nail it. But that kind of shooting will just, will keep you from coming back. Last year, Louisville did not go to a postseason tournament for the first time in 21 years after turning down an NIT bid. Here is Payne from outside. Rebound comes out to Rivers. It's one and done right now for this Louisville team. Here's Rivers on the drive, and that's going to be a charge on him. Louisville didn't have anyone on the board right then. I, I don't think they were expecting that shot. Louisville has got to work the ball, get the good shot, and really go to the board. Substitution for the Cardinals. Number 34, by Faber, replacing the Bradford Smith. Rivers made the good feed, but Keith Williams had an excellent defensive position, anticipated that drive and got in there. Second foul on David Rivers. Inside, intended for Crook. Bo sticks it out of there. They're just not getting the offense going right now, Joe. It's it's almost like they're looking for somebody to take over. And nobody wants to do it right now. Well, I, I think right now they lead, need a little more patience offensively to settle themselves down and get into the flow offensively. They're putting it up so fast that they're they're just not finding themselves offensively. Look how Notre Dame's working this ball. A lot of patience, really picking Louisville apart right now. There's the foul inside, and the reason I think is experience. You're talking the difference of a senior in Rivers and a freshman in Smith. Well, he's really running this ball club with a lot of coolness. And that, that's very important in a pressure game like this. To have that senior leadership just means everything. Mike Abram, a senior, committing his third foul, sending Vos to the line. Vos was raised and born in Jamaica. Didn't start playing basketball until he was 13 years of age. He tells me he was a great cricket player at one time. Does that help your basketball, coach? I thought crickets were things that crawled out from <laughs> under a rock. But you know, John Shumay worked with him in the offseason and has been been working, not in the offseason, but in the early season. And it's really shown up. 49-31. The Irish 15-57 to go in this second half. There's another turnover. Very tentative was the Cardinals that time. Stevenson. And Stevenson has hit two in a row from that spot. Louisville could probably benefit by settling down right now. They did. They turned that ball over without any pressure at all. Well, the last game they played last year, they were beaten by Memphis State by 23. They're now down by 20. And they are backing it out here, being a little more deliberate offensively. They're getting into offense. Keith Williams, that's a three-point attempt. Rebound by Kenny Payne. Six foot eight junior. Nice follow that time. Excellent play, and that's what they need to do. They need to take a little more time, take that ball, get it inside. You know, Joe, you think about what they're coming back from last year. They had to have their confidence shaken, losing like they did in the Metro Conference Tournament, hoping that Smith would be the answer, and there's just a lot that has to be recaptured by Denny Crump's club. Well, that's right, and uh, he's got veterans in here now. They're going to try to settle down and get back in this ball game. Stevenson out to Jameer Jackson. Jackson will back it out. Again, the good boys. Rivers goes in where there doesn't seem to be room and gets it. Payne, Payne went out and took Rivers out in the middle of the floor and was standing up. Rivers just flew right by him. You, you better break down when you try to guard that kid. He finds those little gaps like a good running back. And that time he gets points 24 and 25. Baseline, Ellison. Here's Payne again. Perfect for him, but it doesn't go. Pushing inside. And it's going to go on Notre Dame. Nope, on Louisville, I believe. Wait a minute. Nope, it will be the Irish. It's it was now holding. LeBra I think it was both. LeBradford Smith is going to check in. But before we resume play, we're going to have a timeout. 14.23 to go in this second half of play in this Big Four Classic. And right now, it's all Notre Dame. Indiana, Eddie Sutton against Bob Knight. That last foul was registered to Scott Paddock. Louisville now will inbounds as we have 
Smith and Abram in the lineup, along with Kenny Payne, Purvis Ellison, and Herb Crook. Crook, by the way, is two of seven from the field for four points. They need his experience, his inside play, and thus far he's not given it to Louisville. This is the guy of the hour, though, David Rivers. He's just been nothing short of sensational. I think that Ellison has uh, certainly played a five ball game, and Louisville needs to get that balance play from all the players. Uh, Crook has got to come through here in this last 14 minutes. Here is Smith, Rivers right in his face, tough shot. Stevenson lost it, saved, nope, touched last by Jackson of Notre Dame, so Louisville inbounds again. Well, Smith forced that shot, he and had a lot of defense arm, on him. He's holding his left arm right now. He evidently collided with Rivers on the shot. Here's Payne. Almost had a five-second count. Oh, great play by Bowles. Very alert on the weak side defense. He came in and snagged that flop. Well, Digger told us he wasn't concerned about Rivers' play. He wanted better supporting help from guys like Bowles, and he's getting it here well, this he's afternoon. Getting it, but uh, Rivers is running the show, and his maturity is showing. Here's Rivers driving through. He seems to get away with everything. Other guys drive through there. They wouldn't get back out with the basket. But he can switch hands with that ball <laughs> and protect it. He reminds you of anybody, Joe. Inside and tender for Paddock. Out it comes to Crook. We'll get back to that in a moment. And then all of a sudden, Crook loses it. And Abram tries to save it. Does Rivers remind you of anybody in your years of coaching? Well, you know, we had a little player a couple of years ago, Dickie Beal, that moved like that. But look what a fine play here by Bowles. Great defensive help, anticipation on that weak side. And that's what you like in good team defense. Notre Dame, after that flurry back and forth, ends up with the basketball. 13-25 to go in this game, 53-33. I've had two players that were similar to Rivers, Ronnie Lyons from Maysville, Kentucky, and Dickie Beal from Covington. Both of them could handle that ball in track. That's a nice left-hand spin move by Bose. Good, good low post offense by Notre Dame. Close with 10 points, and he's doing just what Digger wanted. Score 15 points, maybe get 10 rebounds a game. Baseline, Crook rejected by Bose. Bose out of Queens, New York at 6-9, playing that tough defense inside. He's putting defensive plays back-to-back -back with offensive plays right now. Digger said he's got to have a great year for us to go very far this year. Right now, he's got to be encouraged by number 54. As you see the rejection. He's coming into his own. Here's Payne, wide open. They dropped off of him, and he couldn't hit it. They're just not falling. Here's Rivers doing his creative act again, and he'll back it out again. Well, he can make an ordinary team a great team, can't he? He certainly can, but, but Louisville, Louisville looks like they're standing up not aggressive defense. They've got to really get aggressive and after people defensively right here. Abram jumped out, shot a short, but Rivers gets it again. A very opportunistic Irish team. Right now, they are just dictating it to Louisville. They're in complete control of the game. Louisville is just staggered right now, trying to somehow make something happen. They've got to pick up their defense aggressiveness. Look at this. Paddy can't hang on, then gets it back. Again, you got to be alert when he goes inside. <laughs> Paddock rolled that one down his chest. He just wasn't ready. Here's Smith, and it was stripped of him. He's able to come back with it. And trying to get it up is Ellison, and he is fouled. The foul will go on Jameer Jackson. Well, Bradford did penetrate and create right then, but he was a little unsure of himself in his ball handling. And uh, th this is tremendous pressure to put on a freshman in his debut before 40,000 in, in an important game like this one. And so much was expected of him. And it's there. It, it will come through before this year is over. He's, he's a fine-looking ball player. You know, Ellison hasn't scored in the second half. He had 14 in the first half. He's now 0 for 3 from the line. He was their bright spot in that first half, and now he is struggling. Well, the whole Louisville team hasn't scored but four here in this half. Well, they get one there. Timeout, 55-34. It's been an Irish day. Not gone the way Louisville's wanted it, and right now we want to remind you that immediately following this one, Indiana and Kentucky. Bob Knight and Eddie Sutton. 
defending NCAA champions, the Hoosiers. In the second half, Louisville, Joby Hall is shooting 18%. And we heard Denny Crum tell his team during that break, you guys have quit on me. Well, I saw that defensively, Gary, and I remarked that the Louisville players were standing up with their legs locked defensively at a time that they should be down and really putting pressure on this Notre Dame club. Isn't it funny sometimes how you come in with great expectations, you fall flat on your face, and your enthusiasm just goes, huh? Well, you can't let that happen to you, and, and uh, this is a time that you need to take your coat off and throw it on the floor, maybe. <laughs> but you've got to wake this team up and get them aggressive. I remember you doing that one time. Did it several times. Here's Stevenson to Paddock. Good working of the ball again. Bose follows, can't get it. It's tough inside, and a foul on Smith. Smith caught something in the eye. Shaking it off. Both got a few things too. So both of them colliding First inside, foul. and that is the fourth foul on the Bradford freshman. Digger yesterday and watching his practice, you talk about intense. I've seen him intense before, but he was like a he was out there really driving him yesterday, wasn't he? I tell you, I've really enjoyed watching these practices, Gary. That's something that you don't have an opportunity to do when you're coaching. And since I've gotten out of coaching, seeing different styles and different uh, philosophies has really been interesting to me. And I enjoyed Digger's practice very much because he really got oh. after him. He said, if you guys listen to me, you trust me, and we'll do it. We'll That's win it. Right. That's right. And they evidently listened to it. He had a good game plan, and they've executed it to perfection. They're looking Smith over right now. It's uh, like above his eye. Let's see if we can pick it up. He and Vos had a collision under there. Well, Paddock was taking it to the basket right here, and Bolts on the weak side was in great position. And you can see uh, several people getting after Bolts right there. And, and LeBradford Smith caught it right in the right eye. That was an elbow off of Bolts. No question. Yeah, unintentional. Unintentional. Of and uh, this non contact sport just continues to amaze us. So the substitution, Smith coming out of there. We have Abram now along with. Williams at the guards. Rivers, little shake and bake that time. Rebound by Vos. What a job he's doing inside. And here comes Mike Abram. Mid-air change. Gets it off to Williams, who runs it down. Cook, the purpose will load it up and can't get the ball. Go. He was kind of in between on that shot. Well, he was in close enough to, to hang and make that shot. He probably should have put it off the board once he had to hesitate. But, it, but uh, their, their inability offensively seems to be uh, affecting them defensively also. They come down and, and they're just not with it defensively. Defense that's where, they where can, that really shows your enthusiasm. That's right. It? They could pick up their game with a real aggressive effort here defensively. Ten minutes to go in this game. Next to follow, Kentucky and Indiana. Big four classic. Out it comes to Singleton. And that's stripped away that time by Williams, and Crook is fouled by Gary Vos, and Vos knew it. In last night's practice, Digger Phelps really worked his team hard. They went off of this floor soaked with sweat. And you wonder uh, just what effect that'll have on them down the stretch right here. But so far, I would say that uh, they've been very, very sharp. I'll tell you what, Digger have an awfully hard time finding anything wrong right now with his ball club. Oh, I, I'm sure he's very pleased and uh, he shows it over there on the bench as he's very calm. We mentioned earlier he's four victories away from becoming the all-time leading winningest coach at Notre Dame. Here's Payne and Payne who can shoot him very well and gets that one to go. Here's, here's Louisville in their press and a steal and Crook. Maybe that will ignite the Cardinals. Well, this is what they need to do, and the, and the full court press could turn this thing around for them and get them back in the ball game. And Digger very wisely jumps up and gets a timeout. He didn't like that at all. 55-38 with 9.30 to go. ABC's College Basketball will return after this commercial and a word from our local stations. We're not a company, but we recognize potential. We develop it. We use it. We'll make sure that as your responsibility grows, so will you. As your ability for leadership grows, so will you. Working with us, you'll gain self-confidence, become a person with a future. We're not a company. We're your country. We're the Marines. Well, don't see Louisville coming up with some pressure defense. Well, Notre Dame is trying to get organized, but uh, Jameer Jackson gets his ball right here, and there's just too much height in there. 
as Payne and Abram put him in the clamp and caused him to cough it up. Well, that is only the eighth and ninth points of the second half for Louisville, but I guess fortunately Notre Dame's only scored 12 in the second half. We've had a very low scoring second half. Now there's a lot of contact in this these uh, traps and it it's going to be a decision of the referees as to how much of that body contact they allow. Well, that last time they allowed a lot. They allowed a lot. And uh, the trap isn't as effective if, if the referees are calling them close. 55-38 Notre Dame. This man's hard to, hard to press. I get know. that ball in Rivers' hands, and he'll break that trap. Last time, the inbounds to Jackson. Not this time, though. He went to number four. 9-12 to go in the game. Boyce is up on the high post now for pressure release. They're expecting pressure from Louisville right now. Rivers inside, and that will make game some of that. And that last time out, the Cardinal bench was up yelling, trying to encourage Louisville to spark him. That turnover they thought might do it. There's Crook. He finally gets one. That's, that's two baskets for Crook right here. He needs to pick up his offense, but they've got to do it defensively. Uh oh And there is the foul on Kenny Payne coming out trying to put the pressure on Rivers. It just, it's just hard to contain him. And if you move when he starts around, you try to hook him with that knee, or you're just going to pick up fouls. You need to move those feet when you have that man in the trap. 15 foul against Louisville. Payne picking up his first. Working out of a stack offense to free a man for the opening. They go back to the weak side. Right now, it looks like Louisville playing a little more intensity on defense. Out it comes to Vos. Vos is really coming out high to relieve that pressure. Now they're opening it up for with it. as the everyone goes to the baseline, lets him take it on the dribble. In antenna for Vos. Vos having a tough time handling it. Saves it outside somehow to Jackson. Six seconds on the shot clock now with five Rivers releases. That's two shots now have been short. Off it comes to Crook. And Crook misses badly. Air ball all the way over the basket. It was a good shot. But coming down off of the hard dribble and pulling up is a difficult shot. But I've seen him do that. You wonder if the surgery and the inactivity is maybe taking some of that away from him. He definitely seems uh, to be out of his game today. Here's Jackson again outside. Williams with the rebound. Taking that shot pretty quick, I'm sure. Digger didn't like that. Patty, breakaway. Close. Oh. I, I was worried about that backboard right there, Greg. 12 points for Vos. That's good glass. We talked about Rivers, but you got to get a lot of credit to Gary Vos. He's played both ends of the floor very well. Three-pointer by Payne, and there he is again, the man we're talking about. He's stripped of the ball, though, by Mike Abram. Here's Crook. Crook now looking for the basket. Payne with the rebound. Good follow. It just won't go, and Ellison is fouled. You know, you can just see the effort. On every shot, they're they're aiming that ball. They're just trying so hard to get it down, and that ball's hitting the front rim. They're just a little bit tense, and they're feeling the pressure of being 19 points down here with just under seven minutes to go. That was a significant foul. That's the fourth on Gary Vos. You saw the substitutions coming in. Craig Holly, the sophomore from Noblesville, Indiana, and Brad LeBradford Smith has checked back in. Here's Allison. Power move to the basket. Good move. Nice soft touch as he took it up for the shot. And here's Louisville back in the press. Smith checks in with a tape over his eye after sustaining a cut. Like he's been boxing rather than he, playing basketball. He's had a good handler over there in the corner. Must be Jerry Jones. Good cut man, huh? 59-42. The Irish Rivers makes Smith up. Off to Paddock. Stevenson will take it in. He knew Ellison was there. He took it right to him, and that's, that's where you want to go. So now the tempo picking up in the scoring as well. It's going to be off of Notre Dame. Louisville will have it, and checking in again will be Keith Robinson for the Irish. Most of the lead, they get him out of there with his fourth personal foul. Boy, what a fine game he's had. I'm sure Digger Phelps is excited over his prospects for the rest of the year. There's Rivers seemingly everywhere. Holly able to come up with it. Skip pass. Off it comes to Abram, three-pointer. And again, off the front rim, 
Is you just you're trying so hard that it creates tension. Let me ask you: Is there a different perspective shooting here, though, because of the immense area? Sometimes nope. uh, it can't affect your shooting. No question about it. That depth perception is just uh, shot all to pieces in a, in a big arena like this. There's the shot. Payne not able to go with it. Case down, and we're going to have a foul. It's going to be on Smith, and in frustration, slams it down. He's got to be careful. He could get a technical on that in a hurry. Looked like it. He had that left arm leading the out there foul, to ward off the no, Notre Dame player as he went after Smith. the ball. It's a long ways from Bay City, Texas, to the Hoosier Dome before a crowd of 40,000 and a national television audience. It's a long, long way, and there's not many freshmen that could step in here with the responsibility of being a team leader and not feel that pressure today. Fouls out with three points, and he has quite a learning lesson, I'm sure. He will get ready for their next game at Kentucky on December 12th. There's Payne missing, and the follow inside and a foul is gonna go on Stevenson of Notre Dame. And another indecision shot. Payne wasn't really sure if he was going up to shoot or pass right then, and, and made the decision. There is right the freshman right getting the wisdom of one of the fine coaches in the country, Danny Crump. I'm sure Denny did not want to throw him to the lands today. There is Ellison, good second effort, and he is fouled. Keith Robinson got a piece of it. Ellison looks like he caught something in the eye. Ellison's played very well in that first half. He had 14 points. He's added three in the second. It's 61-42 as he goes to the line, and Sean Connor now will so check in for Notre Dame. Dame. Ellison out of Savannah, Georgia. We mentioned he was the NCAA Final Four most valuable player as a freshman. 25 points, I remember, and 11 rebounds in that championship game against Duke. As Denny captured his second NCAA crown, his other coming with Daryl Griffith in 1980. Well, Ellison led their scoring last year 17 times. He's He's been a very consistent player in the scoring column. But uh, even though he improved his statistics last year, they felt like that he didn't live up to that expectation. But I'll tell you, he certainly has the ability to do it. Well, he was affected by their problems of point guard a year ago as well. Oh, yeah, that, that allowed the defenses to sink back in on him, put a lot of pressure on him, and uh, not get him the room to execute. Now, Louisville looks aggressive defensively. They're, they're down uh, hustling, and we got Ellison out front on Rivers switch, right switch. now. He's kind of ri rising up to the challenge. He's playing that point out there, and at 6-9, that's kind of impressive. Now he ducks back inside, lets Williams take the job. Notre Dame's playing the clock a little bit right here, though. They're, they're being very patient offensively. Here's Keith Williams. Williams came on strong last year, starting the last 13 games. They were hoping that uh, they would get some perimeter shooting, some stability from him. Paddock rips it down. That's his job, to rebound and play some defense. He lost it, and a foul will be registered then in the scurry after by Jameer Jackson. Well, Denny Crumb's teams historically, you know this as well as I do, Joe B., get better as the year wears on. They always play well in February, and by the time they get to tournament time, you have to be aware of them. Well, Denny's philosophy is to put a little bit of his offense in at the start of the year and let his players adjust to that, and then he adds offense as the year goes on. Maybe not changing offense, but creating more options and opportunities to score, and at the end of the year, he wants his head to have his team at a peak. Abram able to get the roll, and here is Crook coming in. Payne will sit down. You know what's interesting about this game is the three-point play really has not been a big factor, and there's been so much said about how it's changing the game. Well, both of these coaches are looking for more offense from the three-point play, but neither have needed it today. Inside follow and a foul. I wouldn't say that Louisville didn't need it. They could use the three-point <laughs> play. Wait a minute. But there is Smith. Not only did he have a... A long this afternoon, first held the three first points, first but he got beat up. Look at that. Point, He's got a cut, cut under his left eye and one over his right eye. Non-contact sport, right? He caught elbows from all sides. Louisville in this game is 0 for 9 from three-point range. Notre Dame 2 of 4. Both of them hit by Rivers. But that has changed the face of college basketball, the three-point play from 19 feet, 9 inches. They're starting to recruit differently, trying to set your offense up differently for it, but today really has not been uh, 
any consequence in this game. Well, with the high schools going to the three-point play, it's really going to help the college coaches in the recruiting and in the preparation of those players, learning how to use the three-point play. Here's Allison ripping it down. We have 4.45 to go. 62-45. Kentucky and Indiana to follow. Mike Adamley will be reporting on the Heisman Trophy in an interview with Keith Smart at halftime. That was an impressive turnaround move by Ellison. Beautiful use of the backboard, and he can do that as well as anyone. He's been the bright spot for the Cardinals. He has 21 points. He's 9 of 13 from the field. Pressure. Here comes Rivers. Boy, he just negates any pressure he can He will out. not be pressed. He'll not be trapped. He's like a greased pig. <laughs> There's Williams almost doing a 360 to stay with him. He's something to watch. Now you can see Notre Dame just kind of toying with the ball. Is they're, they're not attacking the basket. They're playing the clock right now. They're perfectly satisfied with this 15-point lead. Ten seconds on that shot clock. Baseline, Stevenson changed his shot because of Ellison, and Ellison picked up the foul. You know what Digger likes about that? He wants this guy to take over late in the game. He feels that Stevenson has to be a factor in the last five minutes. That was a power move by Mark Stevenson. Well, this is an opportunity for Digger to instill those roles in his players, and he does that very well. Stevenson at the line. That foul on Ellison was his fourth with 3.50 to go. Ellison had pretty good position. I did not see the foul. It looked, looked like he went straight up. Excuse me, Joe. Stevenson last year is a good free throw shooter. He shot 78%. 0 for 1. That's his first attempt. Ellison with his fourth foul with 21 points and eight rebounds. Well, he's been a starter since his fourth game his freshman year, and he's been impressive out here this afternoon. He was a guard his freshman year, then they moved him to the forward spot last season. Well, that's good experience. Those uh, guards that you move to forward make you good ball handlers. Here's Ellison, power move. Nice move. He's not quitting, is he? No, he's hanging in there. Ellison is getting good position inside and really working offensively. 62-49, the full court pressure now, and Rivers just drives through it. After he's foul. lost that ball twice, but he's still after it. The crowd getting into this one. He dribbled that one off his elbow, his hand, and his knee. <laughs> one thing they say about Rivers, he will not give up. He will not quit. And his lifestyle has shown that. The adversity this young man has had with the automobile accident, the 15-inch gash in his stomach that he had to recover for, he is not a quitter. Not a quitter. He's courageous. And right now, we've got a timeout with 3.19 to go. Ed Williams doesn't get it, though, as he attempts the shot. Scott Paddock committing the foul. Well, Louisville has to look for the three-point play right now, but you don't want... You want to bang that offensive board, but where their opportunities have to come is from their defense. Notre Dame is eating time off that clock with each possession. With only three minutes to go, Louisville's got to come out and really be aggressive defensively, gamble, get some traps, and try to get some turnovers and come down here and get some quick scores. Ali is able to convert the first free throw. Ali was a starter at the beginning of last year, the sophomore. Then lost his starting job. Very intelligent player. Had a four-point grade point average last year as a freshman in engineering. Well, they need every point they could get. And they didn't get one there. Here's Rivers, and they're going to call a foul. They're going to call that on Mike Abram. That, that was a tough call. With a, with a loose ball rolling around on the floor. And I'm sure there was contact. But that was certainly a disappointment to the Louisville team. Foul on Abram is his fourth. 46 year old Digger Phelps against Denny Crum in his 50th year, both of them in their 17th year as head coaches. Rivers is a good free throw shooter, and they're going to need these free throws down the stretch. He's three and four for the day with 27 points. Well, you couldn't have a better man at the line right now for Notre Dame. You think David Digger Rivers. thinks this game is put away yet? You see that look on his face? I tell you, he's, he's intent right now. He does not get the second. Crook with the rebound. The Cardinals in a hurry. Three minutes exactly left to play in this game. Crook is wide open. 
And it's just not going to go. And that's up above the oh, rim. That was Where? Stevenson. Interference. The he, basket will count. Stevenson thought that ball was coming off, but he went up and got it over the rim. Whether it's in the cylinder or not is the big question. And it looked like it was. Boy, that was a good effort by Stevenson, but you cannot get into that cylinder. He did that. They automatically give him the basket. 63-52 and the foul. Foul going on Crook. Jameer Jackson will go to the free throw line. And again, Louisville just can't cash in when they get those opportunities. It's been a frustrating afternoon for Danny Crump's team. Jackson a 64% shooter, and he gets the bounce on that one. Wish that one in all the way. They think this guy's capable of being an explosive scorer, a spurt scorer. He, along with Single, will be sharing some of that port guard spot. Takes some of the pressure off of David Rivers this year. He gets both of them. Well, I would say it worked pretty good today. And David has had the ball in his hands a lot, but he hasn't had to fight pressure. Not a tiring type situation. Holly from three. They just cannot hit from the three-point range. They now are 0 for 11 from the three-point area. Well, that's that's definitely been a factor here in the game, and they needed that very much to come back here in these last few minutes. Now, that's got to really hurt their confidence because that was their problem a year ago, and nothing's changed as of right now. And the more you talk about something like that, the worse it gets. Now, they've got some retooling to do as they get ready for their next game at Kentucky, December 12th. Ellison with the rebound. Majority break. Williams uncontested. But you can almost sense the game is in Notre Dame's hands because Louisville is not attacking them defensively down here. I don't know if they can attack this team because of guys like Rivers. So hard to play catch up when you got a guy like Rivers handling the ball. Now a minute 48 left. They want to run more time off the clock. It's really questionable when a man takes a shot right now by Notre Dame without running that clock down. 22 seconds on the shot clock. There was a perfect opportunity to trap right then. Two defensive men together. They didn't take advantage of it. You've got to leave and come now and, and get some traps. That may have put the lid on it right there. Boy, is that impressive. Behind the back, wraparound dribble, and buries one. That spelled doom, you know. <laughs> Bose comes up with it. So this is the first meeting since 73. Louisville has not beaten this Notre Dame team since 1956. That's when Peck Hickman was the coach at Louisville. And what a great coach Peck Hickman was. A real fine gentleman. He had great teams there in Lewis. 50 seconds to go. A convincing, impressive win by this team from South Bend as Holly commits the personal foul. Good patience by Notre Dame as Bose was going to bring that ball back outside and not look to the basket because the they're playing the clock all the way out right now. Well, Dicker said we'll find out what kind of team we have in our first three games on the road. They played at Indiana Tuesday. They're here today. They're at DePaul. So those first three road games give him a pretty clear picture of what kind of team he has. His next game is at home against Boston University. Uh, he's getting a lot of experience for his team in these three opening games. And if they can survive that, well, it's going to make them a better ball club. Well, they more than survived today, Joe. Yes, they did. They looked uh, very impressive. An impressive win for Notre Dame. Abram three-pointer just doesn't go, and they continue to completely miss every shot from outside at three-point range. Now 0 for 12. And there is a foul in the backcourt. Kind of a frustration foul. Notre Dame personal has the ball foul. in the hands of the man. His second personal. What was that you said at the start of the broadcast, Rivers, about the flowing rivers? <laughs> well, I wouldn't call him old man Rivers, but... Uh, Notre Dame expects uh, their future to be to flow with Rivers. And it's flowing very well. Stevenson checks out. He played a strong game. Stevenson, Bose, the supporting cast, very, very fine for Digger Phelps. Bose leaves with 10 points, Stevenson with 10. Then they have Rivers, who has led the way. I tell you, 30. I've seen a dramatic improvement 
in Notre Dame from the Indiana game to this game. And I saw Digger prepare his team yesterday. And I give him a lot of credit for the way the game plan that he devised for this game and how he had his team in control from start to finish. Steve Nagorski now checks in, a 6'7 senior, a walk-on, getting some playing time with 27 seconds. Digger's going to, I'm sure, sit back and enjoy that Kentucky-Indiana game following after this one. As David Rivers now leaves. He leaves, Gary, with 32 points, and, and he was 12 for 20 from the field and 6 for 8 from the free throw line and 7 rebounds. Wow, what a game he had. You know, against Indiana, he was only 8 for 24 and uh, had, a, had eight turnovers in that game. So what a what a turnaround he's had. Well, a job well done by David Rivers, the senior out of Jersey City. Well, he's an exciting player and one of the best point guards in the country today. We're going to see another one in this next game, and Ed Davender, he can play it also. Purvis checks out of the game with 23. By the way, Purvis went over 1,000 points in his career today. He needed 20. He had 23. But that is lost in everything else that's happened this afternoon to this Louisville team. I tell you, that's early in a player's junior year to go over that 1,000-point mark. And uh, he's a good one, and he's going to be a great one for Louisville. Will Ogilvies is now in, 6'9", senior. Here's Kenny Payne for three point, and they still have not hit a three pointer. Bill will not go down. Kenny on the steal. Payne will try it. Nope, gets it inside to Abram. Abram doesn't get the roll. And that's going to end it. It ended on a missed shot. They just could not get it down. And that, that was the story of Louisville here in the second half. 69 54, Notre Dame over Louisville, and Joe. You had to be impressed with this Notre Dame team. I don't think Digger could have had a play any better than they did. Oh, they're impressive, and I think they've uh, spoken about their future this year in this fine game against the Louisville Cardinals. And so well, Digger really looks happy as he's coming out, shaking hands on the floor. 325 wins for Digger Phelps. This ABC Sports exclusive is being brought to you by Honda, who invites you to experience the new Civic four-door sedans at your local Honda dealer. And by Bud Light, proud sponsor of the 1988 U.S. Olympic team. 69-54, Notre Dame, ABC's college basketball will return after a word from...